Welcome to Any Way You Slice It, where we talk about your identity and purpose in the kingdom of God. Come join author Ricardo Richardson as we slice our way to the core of God's word to experience the beautiful and transformational discovery of who we are and why we exist, no matter how we slice it. Today's message is, Write the Vision. Beloved family, our text says, Then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain on tablets, that he may run who reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it will speak and it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Habakkuk 2, 2-3 When God gives instruction, he gives the revelation and the strategy. Actually, the word used for vision in this text is the word revelation, because the man of God was waiting for his answer from God. We all have the question of purpose in life and about our success and destiny. How do we achieve what God purposed for us? It is our responsibility to write out our plans. For before a business can start, the ones with the business idea must first plan for the business. This entails researching the problems that exist in a particular marketplace and then addressing how the business will provide a solution. This is what all successful businesses do. They are all solution providers or problem solvers. Apple capitalized on a huge universal problem. The population was growing and people needed to communicate more effectively and efficiently. Before Apple could address the problems of the marketplace, they had to first write the business plan. They wrote it down and made it plain so that others can read and share and give input on the execution of the plan. It is our responsibility to write down the plan and make it plain. To humans belong the plans of the heart, but from the Lord comes the proper answer of the tongue. Proverbs 16.1 Apple develops a vision statement and they write it down. The thoughts and ideas of the company is written down so that it became their mission to execute their vision. We hear about how companies' mission and vision statement make known to the public of their intentions and thoughts to bring their product to market. What they have in their brains must be birthed to the world to solve the problems that calls for it. We call this their brain a child. And in fact, you can substitute the term mission statement to purpose statement. The purpose is the original intent or why the company or product exists. So if a multi-billion dollar company has a purpose statement, a vision and a mission statement, why don't we? Our responsibility, says God, is to write down our plans. God says specifically to us, write out your vision and make it plain. So you have a dream and you feel that your dream is bigger than you are. That's a good indication that it's from God. God is a big God and has a big vision and wants you to have big dreams. The father says, my plan is to give you a future and a hope. That's big, y'all. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Jeremiah 29, 11. So what are we afraid of? God planted the dream seed in the ground of our heart. And he often allows us to dream about our purpose. We have a dream and we can't shake it. See, God created you for a specific purpose. And you can only develop a vision and a mission out of your purpose. But I want you to recognize this. God says, write the plan and make it plain. The plan you are writing out is for him. He will bring you everything that is needed in order to fulfill your purpose. But you have to write it down and make it plain. Acts 2.17 says, In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. The Satan wants the seed planted in our hearts to die. He wants our dreams and our visions to die. For if he kills the seed, he doesn't have to destroy the tree. 
But our Father God encourages us to hold on to our faith, hold on to our dreams and our visions. For where there is no vision, the people perish. So continue to dream and visualize your plans and dreams. He wants us to have good success. All company success are based in the fulfillment of their mission statement. If the purpose for which they started the company isn't being fulfilled, then they have failed. So then success is really purposed fulfilled. Your success and my success is not measured by how much money we make, or our advancement in fame or position or status, but by the fulfillment of our purpose. This is what the Bible calls good success. God says something very striking to Joshua. He said, my servant Moses is dead. Get over it. In other words, his purpose on earth is done. So now you have to fulfill your purpose. God says, only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left that you may prosper wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. Joshua 1, 7 to 8. This suggests that there are two kinds of success, good or bad success. Good success is fulfilling the purpose God gave to us according to his word. Bad success is simply doing everything else other than fulfilling your purpose, which includes, by the way, making money and advancing in a job, but never fulfilling our purpose. It's looking back at our career and realizing we've done nothing more than work a job to maintain and pay the bills. What impact have we had for God? So once we ask God to reveal our purpose to us, then we write the vision, get counsel from God through his word to execute the vision. God will provide the provisions that we need. You do know that God owns everything. If billionaire financer Warren Buffett invited you to his office and said, write your dream out in a statement, write out your vision and your plans and write out how you want to accomplish your dreams. Money is not an object for me. It doesn't matter the cost. I have unlimited resources and provisions. What would you do? Will you believe everything Buffett says? Will you have faith in his ability to deliver on his word? Would we be obedient and follow his command and request to write the vision and make it plain for him to see? If you don't want to answer, I will. My answer is most certainly if I didn't dream before that night, I would most certainly have one then and write up my vision statement, make it plain for him to read and begin to tell him all about my plans with excitement and enthusiasm. So now, would you believe God? Is he bigger than the billionaire financer? Absolutely, yes. Do you really believe he can deliver on his word and promises? Absolutely, yes. Do we really have faith in God? He created you, the billionaire and the kings. He is sovereign. He is the one who created us with a purpose. But he says to us, if you don't know your purpose, seek me first. Seek my kingdom first and I will add everything to you. My plan is to prosper you and give you good success. If you only meditate on my word and keep it in your hearts in obedience. Write the vision. Make it plain, for the vision is yet for an appointed time that God knows and will reveal to us. Much more.